Okay, chapter five, um, day one. What we're going to look at today is um, we're out of functions now. So what we're going to look at is back more with quadratics is how do we find the roots or solutions of a quadratic equation that is not factorable, okay? Um, up until now, we've factored it, set the factors each equal to zero, making our t, and then we got two answers, and life was good. But now, how do we find the roots of a quadratic equation that is not factorable? And what we're going to learn today is we're going to learn a method that's called completing the square. So, how do we find the roots that is not factorable? By completing the square. Um, this will be new, but when you do it, you'll say to yourself, eh, it wasn't too bad when we get done. So don't worry about that, it kind of sounds different. Um, we'll be okay. So recall though, you have to remember something about quadratics. <clears throat> that the general form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c, and then what we also like to do is make sure it's equal to zero. Um, the a is always the number in front of x squared. If I don't see a number, then it is 1. The b is the number in front of x, okay? And the c is the number that stands all by itself, not next to an x. So you have to remember that that's the general form. So that way when I talk about what a, b, and c do, you'll know what I'm talking about. So for example, you might say find the roots of or the solutions of x squared minus 6x equals 5. All right, well, just like before, our first step is to get the equation equal to zero. I have to do that first, because that's the general form. So I'm gonna take away five from both sides, and I get x squared minus six x minus five equals zero. Now, factors of five with a difference of six doesn't exist. Five and one have a difference of four. So, you might say, well, there's no solutions. No, there are solutions. It's just what the focus said. This is not factorable. So we're going to go through this process of completing the square. All right. So if it's not factorable, which this is not, move any constants to the other side. Now, a constant is the C term. This is a constant right here, OK? Move it to the other side. All right, well, why did you give me equal to zero if we're going to move it to the other side? Because you want to make sure everything's on one side, all cleaned up first. See if you can factor it. Then if not, kick this thing back to the other side. So x squared minus 6x equals 5. So move any constants, which are your c terms, to the other side. Now, there's a little process we have to go through. Okay? Little process. Take one half of the B term. Take one half of the B term. Well, the B term, according to our general equation, is the number in front of X. Take one half of that number and square it. So take one half of the B term and square it. So. I'm going to take half of negative 6. So negative 6 divided by 2. Well, what's half of negative 6? That's negative 3. And then I'm going to take negative 3 and square it, and I get 9. So step 3 is all about doing this right here. Take half of this term. I write it right underneath. It keeps myself organized. Square it. Now remember, when I square it, it will always be positive. Always be positive. You don't have to do this on your calculator. You just know that negative 3 times negative 3, positive 9. So step 3. That's why it's called completing the square, because we are forcing this to be a perfect square. Step 4. Add this value, OK? So add this value of 9 to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to go back to my equation, wherever I left off, and I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So I have x squared minus 6x 
add 9 equals 5 add 9. So I'm adding this value to both sides of the equation. So let me clean this up a little bit. I have x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 9 and 5 is 14. Okay. Now, next one. Factor the new quadratic that you just got. All right, factor the new quadratic that you get. Here's my new quadratic. Let me factor this. Factors of 9 that add to 6, yeah, I forced it to be factorable. When I take this step, I don't bring this back over and set it equal to 0. I just factor this side now. Factors of 9 that add to 6 are 3 and 3. I need it to be negative 6, so negative 3, negative 3. And if you notice, this value of negative 3 will always be that value right there. Whatever you squared will always be right here. All right? Always, always, always. So I factored x minus 3, x minus 3. Notice step 6. Rewrite these two parentheses that I have as that parentheses squared. Because every single time you do this, it's going to work out such that these are identical. We've forced it to be identical. So another way to rewrite x minus 3 times x minus 3 is just x minus 3 squared. And it still equals 14. So rewrite the two parentheses as just a single parenthesis that's squared. I know this sounds like a lot, but when you go through the process, you'll see it goes by a little bit quicker and you'll be fine. Now, how do you undo a square? Well, you take the square root of both sides. So I take the square root of both sides. So now I'm going to take the square root of both sides, undoing the square. Well, we know that the square root of anything squared, it's like the doing and the undoing, we did this before, is just the anything, x minus 3. The square root of 14, I don't know what that is, not, e not nice, so I just write it as the square root of 14. Now, we talked the other day in class about the fact that when you are the one taking the square root, we have to make sure that we do not forget the plus minus on the radical sign. Okay? So part of step seven is don't forget the positive and negative in front of that radical sign. Because when you're the one taking the square root, it really could be two options. It could be the positive value or the negative value of that square root symbol. Okay? Well, we're almost done. I have x minus 3 equals this. And I want to get what x equals. I'm just going to move this 3 to the other side. All right, so the very last step is get x by itself and simplify the radical if possible. All right, so get x by itself and simplify the radical if possible. So I'm just going to add 3 to both sides. So x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 14. Square root of 14, you might say, well, I can simplify it to 7 and 2, but 7 and 2 are not perfect squares, so you're done. This is your answer. These are the solutions, or what we call the roots of a quadratic. It's 3 plus or minus 14. Uh, square root of 14, sorry. 3 plus or minus square root of 14. Um, another way to write that if you wanted to, is you could write it out separately. So 3 plus radical 14, you could write it out 3 minus radical 14. You don't have to do this unless someone says, hey, hit this on a calculator and get me a decimal. Then you would type 3 plus radical 14 and you'd get me a decimal answer. You'd type 3 minus radical 14 and you'd get me a decimal answer. But most of the time, you can leave it like this. And if it's a multiple choice question, you're going to see the answer like this. Okay? 
You just have to make sure that your radical is in simplest form. Let's take a look at one more. So find the roots. Let's go through the process again. It's equal to zero. Factors of eight with a difference of eight doesn't exist. You get the eight to the other side. Okay? So I have x squared minus 8x equals 8. Take half of the b term. I'm going to do it over here. I'll do it over here. So negative 8 over 2 is negative 4. Square it. Half of the b term and square it is 16. Add that to both sides. So x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 8 plus 16. Factor x minus 4, x minus 4. Again, that number, negative 4 minus 4 right here, will go here and here. 16 and 8, 24. Rewrite x minus 4 squared is 24. I'm running out of room, so I'm just going to move up here. So x minus 4 squared equals 24. Square root, right? x minus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 24. Okay? Bring the 4 over. x equals 4, because I'm going to add 4 to both sides, plus or minus the square root of 24. Now, is this simplifiable? Yes, it is. I gotta take one last step now. Break down the square root of 24 into radical 4, radical 6. So x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2, square root of 6. Done. Okay? The only last thing I want to talk about is. What if the a value is not equal to 1? All right? This has to be equal to 1 right here. So when we take a look at our very first question, all right, this number, and, and write this, all right? Write this in your notes for me. There must be a 1 in front of x squared. In other words, the a value has to be 1 for to do to, or else you cannot do complete the square. Okay? So let's go to the second page. What if it's not a 1? Well, standard things like before. GCF, is there one? Yes, there is. I'm going to divide everything here by 2. So now I have x squared plus 10x minus 4 equals 0. Notice, now this is a 1. I can go through the process of completing the square. If it's not divisible by, you know, if everything is not divisible by 2, we'll talk in class kind of what, what to do then. I wouldn't choose completing the square if it's not. There's other methods that we have coming up. But if it's divisible by 2 and you can get it down nice and easily, uh, easy, then you want to go ahead and finish that out by completing the square. So that's it.